here they think that you know they're and saving the world if anybody in Scientology did the math on clearing the planet which is their overall objective to get every single person into Scientology in the whole world if they just did the math on that they realize they're gonna have to sign up for another billion year contract when this one's over because that's how long it's going to take them it's going to take them about two billion years at the rate they're going and even that i, I think that's even a you know that's giving them a little bit more credit than uh, than they're due so it's just silly speaking of the billion year contract i once heard it said that someone who's willing to sign a billion year contract deserves uh what scientology gives them I well, disagree with that. Well, no, I mean, it go, it go, there's, a, there's a lot of schools of thought on that, but in, uh, I mean, I signed a billionaire contract when I was working for them. I was 16 years old, and um, my whole family was in Scientology. Everybody I knew was in Scientology, and they basically said, if you do this, you're going to be helping a lot of people. And, you know, once you get in and you start doing that, and, you know, as soon as I said, I don't want to do this anymore, I want to leave, it was like, well, you're going to be declared a suppressive person. You're not going to have anywhere to live. You're not going to have anything to do. And if you leave, we're going to hunt you down anyway. And when I finally did, 15 years later, did decide to leave, yes, they tried to recapture me. Yes, I never was able to speak to my parents or my sister ever, my mother or my sister ever again. And yes, they gave me a bill for $150,000 saying, this is how much I owe them for what I did while I was there. And it's like... You know, when you don't have any money, you don't have anywhere to go, and you don't have anything, and on top of that, they're going to say, you know, you can't talk to anybody, and you owe us $150,000. That's what every Sea Org member has to look forward to if they do try and leave. So it's one of those things, the amount of fear of what's going to happen to you, the physical harm, mental abuse, um, you know, the, the torture of what happens. That's all these things that are sitting there so that even once you do decide to leave, you can't because those are the things that are going to happen to you if you do. So, you know, and even I, I, I you know, I, I even tell people sometimes, yeah, I, I can't believe I wasted 15 years, but it's like, I didn't know, I didn't know what else to do. I, I literally was in fear of my life if I left. So it was either stay and be miserable or die. So it's kind of like, you know, that's a hard choice to make when you're 16 years old, when you're 20 years old, when you're 25 years old. It's like, I'm going to leave here and I could die. They, I, and I did almost die in the process of leaving. So it's kind of like, you know, I know how real that is. And um, for me, if I can make it so one person doesn't have to go through that, then that makes it all worthwhile to me. So as long as, as, long as they're still doing what they're doing, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. And that's kind of like the the deal I've made is that, you know, I'm going to keep doing this until the human rights abuses stop, until the physical abuse stops, until the, the things, the disconnecting of families, the forced and coerced abortions, all these things, until those things stop, I'm not going to stop. So that's what they have to look forward to with me. I'm with you. Cool. I think <laughs> that's good. You. And so, you know, you have these people that have been in there for 30 years. When they come out, you know, it takes a lot of time to Adjust. for the, you yeah. know, the Kool-Aid to get out of your system yeah. and for you to realize what was true, what was not true. And, um, you know, so sometimes when people are like, oh, this guy, he did this and he did that and we want to see him come clean. It's like it's going to take a long time for some of these people to actually, you know come to grips with what happened and you know so that's why I'm kind of like you know every person's different some people they might walk out and then the next day they're like oh you know this is this is crazy and this is what happened and this happened and you know I was held captive and you know I had to go to the RPF the labor camp and you know and then some people that they might have had the exact same thing happen but it might right. take them 10 years to be able to go and talk to somebody and say hey this is what happened to me a lot of these people they're just they're just happy to be gone right that 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 for them is a huge deal that they're that that's not happening to them and they're happy that they're, they're, that they've left and then you know it it takes time for them to go okay yeah maybe maybe I should tell somebody or maybe and that's one of the reasons why law enforcement and a lot of people can't really do anything because you have somebody who these things happen to and 10 years later they say right. oh this is what happened it's like well, they're injured you know, people too. They are yeah. injured, and they oh, have yeah. to—they have to go about it in their own way, in their own time. Totally. Yeah. It's and everyone's different, it's, and and everyone deals with uh, everyone deals with trauma in, in different ways. And you know, I've read read some stuff on you know uh, 
post-traumatic stress syndrome and some of these things that you know PTS <laughs> it's yeah, called I know. ironically <laughs> yeah um, but you 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 these people that this happens to it's it's very similar no disrespect to you know veterans or people who served in the military or anything but you know being in Scientology um, has a lot of similarities you know being a, an employee of the Scientology organization has a lot of similarities to you know um, there's so much stress that you have mm -hmm. that when you leave you you carry that with you the things that happen to you the experiences the you know the sleep deprivation all these things they they have a very profound effect on a person and it, it, it could take that person years to get over that well, and and to be able to even to be able to talk about it is a, is you know for some people it could be very a very emotional thing for them to even say this is what happened to me because they've spent so much time trying to distance themselves from it or you know to to forget that it happened and when you ask these people are you probe and you you try and get that it's you know they get it they can get very upset so you know that's why you know some people some people take longer than others so yeah. you know it's just that's just the way it is so a person can only handle what they're able to handle totally like even this Aaron Saxton guy I was watching this video he's talking about this thing that happened in uh, income when they had this big security breach and all these people were held captive and I know that whole thing that went down because I knew about it at Int a bunch of people disappeared from Int and went down there to guard these people and to interrogate these people and but you got to dig this thing happened in 1995 it's 2009 and yeah. this guy's telling what happened it's like yeah that was 14 years ago so even for this guy he seems like a really you know he's got his head on straight and he's telling the truth and he's saying this is all the stuff that happened but it was 14 years ago so you go like it's one of those things where you go like dude <laughs> why didn't you tell us about this in 1996 you know it's 2009 it's because you know who knows how long it took that guy to be able to you know get enough uh, you know get his head on straight enough to be able to go this is what happened you know this is I was part of this and that's the other thing a lot of these people they they feel responsibility for what happened because they were the ones doing it or they were there when it happened and you know they knew something was going on and they knew people were being held there but you know what are you gonna do how, right. how can they do anything it's just I, little old me you know? right well I think it's important for people to realize too that people like Aaron maybe they did things that they feel responsible for and they feel were awful but they were also subservient to somebody else Totally, yeah. They, they had repercussions hung over their heads. Totally. So they really felt like they had no choice. Yeah. And that needs to be taken into consideration when thinking about these guys. Yeah, because he didn't, you know, the, this Aaron guy, he wasn't the one calling the shots. Right. He wasn't the one saying, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. He was just another, another worker, another, you know, another, basically another person saying you know this is what you guys have to do and he's like okay I'll do it you know he's just another worker he's just being he's just orders his orders you know that's what they told me to do that's what I got to do you know right another cog in the machine yeah totally so I don't I don't even to me people that uh, that I knew or worked with when I was there if I they get a hold of me or we reconnect the first thing I do is hey man anything that happened when we were there dude I don't you know I I don't have anything against you. I don't know what I did or what you did, but you know, that's all behind us. I, I just want to make it right for anybody else who still has to go through it. So, yeah. you know, I don't hold, I'm not holding grudges against these people like, oh, you did this to me. It was like, you know, it was a dog eat dog in the sea organization. You did what you had to do to, to, you know, not end up on the other end of it. So, you know, and most of the cases, no matter what you did, you yeah. ended up on the bad end of yeah. it anyway. So, that's what it sounds like. so anyway. That's my two cents. I really admire you. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate all the, you know, all the support people have been given and, you know, all the things that have happened. And, you know, hopefully we can take this thing all the way and we can, you know, right all the wrongs. And this thing will, uh, you know, be a thing of the past. We can uh, read about it in history books. Yeah, <laughs> that would be good. <laughs>